In today's edition of NHL Trade Talk, we're discussing all the teams in the Central Division. And that's coming up next. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and analyze all 31 NHL teams, so if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So let's take a look at the latest NHL trade rumors. As I mentioned off the top, today we're looking at all the teams in the Central Division. This division is incredibly competitive and really tight as of right now. Out of the seven teams in the division, five would make the playoffs if they started today. The two teams that are on the outside looking in are not that far off the mark, so we could see some uh, standing changes here between now and the end of the year. So there's going to be, uh, some of these teams are going to end up being buyers, and some of them are going to be sellers, and there's one or two here that may not do a whole lot. So I wanted to take a look at each one, as there's a lot of speculation around these teams and what might be going down here over the next few weeks as we approach the NHL trade deadline. Let's start with the biggest surprise of the division this year, the Colorado Avalanche. I don't think any of us would have predicted that the Avalanche at this point in the season would be sitting in a playoff spot. I know I didn't, and it's a great surprise. Ever since the Matt Duchesne trade went down, Nathan McKinnon's been on fire, and that team has been doing tremendous. They currently sit in one of the wild card spots as of right now. Now, one of the things that's been most impressive with this team is that they've done so, their latest winning streak, without one of their top players and Tyson Berry on defense. So the speculation right now is that since they've done so well without Tyson Berry, is that when he returns, that they may actually look to trade him because they could certainly use an upgrade at forward. They could use another scoring forward to play on their second or third line, and that he might be the trade chip to get this done for them. He still has one more year left on his contract, so he wouldn't be a rental player for any team, but there's certainly lots of defensemen out there uh, on the market as we approach this year's trade deadline. Although you could argue that a lot of the defensemen that are mentioned in trade rumors right now, they're not top guys. A lot of them for most teams would be five, six, seven spots. So they're not a lot of marquee names or pending UFAs or anything out there on defense that's real attractive. There's all kinds of guys out there that could be valuable depth pieces for a lot of teams. They, like I said, to be like a six, seven or even an eight spot, depending on where they sit with any particular team. But Tyson Berry, if he indeed ends up on the market, that would be a much uh, bigger name on defense available compared to most of the other ones that are currently already out there. So do you think the Colorado Avalanche could actually end up trading Tyson Berry? You know, this is not the first time his name's come up in trade speculation. It was uh, gone through a lot last year, never came to be. Obviously, in a, in a sense, it doesn't make sense for the Avalanche to trade Barry as they might get a boost out of him, from him when he comes back from injury. It's kind of like their own kind of rental situation. Instead of bringing another guy in, they've already got a pretty good player coming off injury reserve. Or do they sit back and say, you know what? We realize even though we've improved a lot this year, we're not a Stanley Cup contender. It might be a good opportunity to trade this player to get back some assets so we can continue to improve into next year and beyond. So what do you think is the most likely situation here? Does Tyson Berry get moved by the deadline? Or do the Avalanche hang on to him and they try to make some noise here in the playoffs? And to be honest, they probably could make some noise in the playoffs with or without him. They've done quite a bit of noise so far with him on injury reserve. So let me know your thoughts on the Avalanche and what might go down with Tyson Berry. Now let's take a look at two of the other teams that are battling for the top three spots right now. That's the Nashville Predators and the St. Louis Blues. Obviously, it's been reported by both teams here for some time that they're more likely both going to be looking to add a forward as we approach the deadline. Ideally, somebody who can play, uh, ideally a top six roller, to the very least a top nine, who can be counted on to contribute in the scoring area. So who might these players uh, be that they are looking at? Well, they've both been speculated to be looking at the, a lot of the top guys on the market, like Evander King, Max Pacioretty, um, Mike Hoffman. You can throw in a couple other guys now from the Rangers, possibly on that list, like a Michael Grabner and a Rick Nash. Obviously, those guys are guys that those teams are looking at. I wouldn't be completely shocked here. Now, here's a thought for the Nashville Predators. If they're indeed looking for scoring, they've got a lot of guys tied up in long-term contracts. They're not too bad for the salary cap right now, but they've got a lot of good-valued longer-term deals. If they were looking at one of those forwards, might it not make a lot of sense for them to look to the Ottawa Senators, maybe try to get Mike Hoffman out of Ottawa and reunite him with Kyle Turris. Obviously, Hoffman and Turris played together quite a bit in the last few years. They know each other very well, had some pretty good chemistry, and Hoffman has the kind of contract right now that would kind of suit what their team has. Like, it's not real high, it's not real low. Like, he's a good 
good valued contract. If he can get back to being a 25 to 30 goal man, then his contract is certainly very fair and, and good value. So that might be something that I wouldn't be surprised to see the Predators look at. The Predators and the Senators do have a history of making some trades, so that's something to keep your eyes out for. In regards to the St. Louis Blues, they've made it pretty clear they also would like to add a forward, but they're not interested in a rental situation. So they're looking to a player with a contract beyond this year. So that kind of narrows things down a little bit. I mean, obviously, anybody who's a pending UFA like Nash, Grabner, or even like an Evander Kane might not be the guy that they're interested in. Obviously, had Spence been speculated that they also were interested in Hoffman, but they may take a look at Max Pacioretty as well. Hard to say if any of these uh, guys, especially Pacioretty and Hoffman, actually end up getting traded, but it's fair to say the teams like the Blues and the Predators certainly have interest in bringing in that type of player. The contracts seem about right what they're looking for, so we'll see if a deal gets done or not. Now let's discuss the Winnipeg Jets. The Winnipeg Jets are in an interesting situation here. Obviously they have some adversity to battle through right now. They are currently without top forward Mark Shifley, who has been out for just about a month now. So he should be back anywhere in two to four weeks. When he was originally injured, they estimated six to eight weeks. So he's probably looking at about another two weeks or a little bit better before he returns to the lineup. But now it's been reported that they lost defenseman Jacob Truba, who's going to be out long term as well. And he's their second highest uh, defenseman in terms of minutes played. So that's a big blow to the Winnipeg Jets. Now, does that change their outlook as we approach the trade deadline? Jacob Truba, more than likely at this point, may not be back until after the deadline passes. I mean, at this point, the injury just kind of happened and they, they need to evaluate exactly how long he's going to be out. But uh, at the same time, more than likely, uh, it sounds like it's going to be long term enough that he will be out past the deadline. So does that kind of force their hand and maybe look to the defense market to pick up a defenseman? They should have Shifley back obviously before the trade deadline. So that shouldn't be an issue. That's kind of like another situation where you don't really need to go out and make a trade because you're getting your own guy back and he's one of the best players in the league. So they've done quite well uh, to keep things going here without Shifley. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't think they'd be looking to do a whole lot with the forward group, the Winnipeg Jets are certainly sitting in a great position right now, and I don't think they're going to want to blow this chance to do some damage in the playoffs. So what do you think? What do the Jets do? Do the Jets go out and add a defenseman with Chuba being out long term? There's all kinds of guys out there uh, on the market, on defense, although there's not very many that are his level of player. But at the same time, you know, because of the salaries and whatnot, they probably wouldn't want to add too big of a salary to the to the list of players on their team anyway so you know maybe they add some extra depth hard to say but Jets fans out there what do you think the Jets should do do they make a move now because of the Truba injury give me your thoughts down in the comment section now taking a look at the Dallas Stars right now the Dallas Stars currently sit in one of the wild card positions apparently it's rumored that they'd like to add a forward as well they could certainly use someone to play between their second and third lines and have uh, and boost their secondary scoring amongst the forward group Obviously, on the back end, things aren't too bad. They have had Mark Mathot out injured quite some time, so I can't help but wonder if they might consider adding a defenseman. But at the same time, depending on how things go over the next few weeks for the Stars, will kind of determine, I think, what they do. I mean, obviously, the Dallas Stars are a team that uh, they're kind of on the bubble right now. There's, I don't think there's too much point in adding a whole lot, but in the right situation for the right contract, they could certainly make a move. I think they wouldn't be completely opposed to moving a player like a Jason Spezza, for example, although he has turned things around a bit since he was scratched earlier this year. But at the same time, I don't think they're too much of a fan of his contract anymore, considering his level of production uh, over this year and last year. But that's going to be a really hard contract to move. He still has one more year left after this year. So well, hard to say what happened. I don't think anything really goes down there. So I think the Dallas Stars are a team that probably won't do a whole lot. If they can add a depth forward, I think that's probably going to be as far as it goes. Now looking at the Minnesota Wild, uh, the Minnesota Wild are a team that currently sits on the outside of the playoffs, but they're kind of hanging right there with the teams in a wild card spot. So the Minnesota Wild, it's not inconceivable that they could get themselves into the playoffs. At this point, if they did, it would most likely be at the expense of either the Stars or the Avalanche. So depending on how those teams do, along with the Wild, will kind of determine. But I don't see the Minnesota Wild, even if they can improve and play enough to kind of get themselves into that wild card spot, I really don't see that team being overly active at the trade deadline. If anything, I wouldn't be completely shocked that they still became sellers, regardless if they get into a wild card or not. They certainly have some players, I think, that they wouldn't be opposed to moving out. They're trying to cut some salary down. You know, if you take a look at the, the Wild, for example, um, you know, they also have, uh, they also spent a lot of the deadline last year. And for this year's draft, they do have a first round pick. They don't have a second round. 
They do have multiple third round picks though, because they've picked them up in other deals. So I don't see them being too active this year. But I mean, if you take a look at some of their, um, their pending, they have enough pending UFAs, it would be a great depth piece for a lot of other teams, like Daniel Winnick, for example. Uh, he might be a player that he's on a, you know, an expiring contract, we can, I think it's $1 million. So I mean, Winnick would be a great addition to like a fourth line on a lot of teams. They got Matt Cullen. You know, I wouldn't be completely shocked if they figure out a way to get Matt Cullen back to Pittsburgh for one more run. That's something that uh, wouldn't surprise me in the least. Obviously, they could use another uh, center to play third or fourth line center, and he certainly has uh, excelled at that role in the past, so I don't see why he couldn't do it again. I mean, I know they've, the Penguins have had uh, uh, Jake Gensel playing a fair bit of center ice, and I don't think that's really where he's best suited. I think he's really better suited on the wing. They do need a center riceman, but because of their cap situation and the rumors that they want to add a scoring winger, like it's been reported, they get a lot of interest in Evander Kane. They're not going to be able to do that move without, uh, you know, without uh, shedding some salary, and that's not going to leave any room to add another uh, center riceman. So they're going to need somebody with a really low value contract. Colin could provide that, so I wouldn't be completely shocked if we've seen that go down. But time will tell here. Another pending UFA in the Minnesota Wild is Chris Stewart. He might be a good uh, depth piece for some teams as well because, I mean, he can score some goals. He's uh, not quite as prolific a goal scorer as he was earlier in his career. Uh, however, he is and does have some value for what he can bring. The other player that I think the Wild would like to move, but it would be a little bit tougher, would be Tyler Ennis. Tyler Ennis at one point was a pretty consistent 20-goal guy for a few years with the Buffalo Sabres. And during his time with Minnesota, he hasn't really done overly well. His production has really dropped off. He still has another year left at over $4 million, so I think they'd like to move that contract. But with production like that, that's not going to be easy to do unless they're willing to retain some salary, and I'm not really sure that they're willing to do that. But I guess time will tell. I know I've seen that name come up as a name that they'd like to move. Hard to say if it'll actually happen or not. Now, taking a look at the Chicago Blackhawks, it's really, really odd to me to look at the standings in the Central Division and see Chicago at the bottom. I mean, it's really, uh, times have really changed in that division. And you can only be a top team for so long. They've had a, a terrific decade, really, ever since the emergence of Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane. That team has been tremendous, won a lot of division titles, some Stanley Cups, and have been a consistent playoff team over the years here. Now, for Chicago, they certainly have a few players as well. We might see them sell off. I wouldn't be completely shocked. They could certainly add uh, a little bit of depth to some other teams and maybe recoup what they can possibly for either um, you know, a lower grade prospect or maybe a draft pick, second, third round, for example, like a Tommy Wingles. Like last year, he ended up as a, a mid-season pickup by the Ottawa Senators. It was great help to them, helping them get to the conference finals last year. So, I mean, he could certainly be on the move. He's on a one-year deal. So I wouldn't be completely shocked to see him go to another team and uh, maybe see if he can help out as a depth player just like he did last year. I mean, even like a Lance Boma or a Patrick Sharp, they're all pending free agents as well. And I would be quite surprised if any of them come back to Chicago next year. So they might as well trade out what they can and recoup some assets because they are going to need them as they retool going forward. So I wouldn't be surprised to see the Blackhawks make a few moves in regards to that. And the other forward actually was Chicago that I think would be a good pickup by some teams. He's still young enough that he could still be developed into a more of a player than he thought he would be. It was a Thomas Yurko. Thomas Yurko was drafted by the Detroit Red Wings. He's a player I got to see quite a bit as he plays here in my home province when he was in junior. He played for the St. John Sea Dogs. So I had an opportunity to see Yurko play enough times. He's a tremendous player, at least at that level he was. Hasn't been quite able to translate that game to the NHL. They, uh, going through the Red Wings system, I thought it would be great for him because they always took their time to develop their players through their AHL affiliate. And it just he's never found that consistency um, at the NHL level just yet. He's had his moments here and there. And last year in February, he was traded from the Red Wings to the Hawks. And he just really hasn't caught on a whole lot. He hasn't even played a lot this year. He spent more of the year down in the minors than he has in the NHL. But he's still young enough that he might actually, given the opportunity, um, be able to pick up his game and find a new home here somewhere else in the NHL. He's a pending free agent, although he's young enough that he's still a restricted free agent, but it's still a, a player that uh, you know might have some depth and some value going forward. It's a pretty low risk, low contract uh, move for a team to pick up as they head for the playoffs. So as I mentioned, this central division is very competitive. It's very tight. We're likely going to see five out of seven teams make the playoffs. As of right now, I wouldn't be completely surprised, like I said. I think Dallas and Minnesota aren't going to be overly busy. 
I uh, wouldn't be surprised though to see Minnesota become sellers regardless of what goes down just to kind of try to recoup what they can. Same with Chicago. I really think Chicago, unfortunately, is not looking good to make the playoffs. And I think it only makes sense for them to sell off some of these UFAs if they're able to try to recoup some assets so they can recoup going forward and uh, see what that team can do to try to get themselves out of the salary cap issues that they have. But I fully suspect the top three between the Blues, the Preds, and the Jets to be somewhat active. More so the Blues than the Predators. They're the teams to watch in this division as far as trades go. Don't forget as well to follow us on Twitter. You'll see our Twitter handle right here. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. All of our links to our social media accounts are down in the description below. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time.